Now that we've seen these three core features of OSPF functionality, let's look at how to configure it in a network. OSPF is generally configured on the basis of the design that has been chosen for the network. Here we'll explore the basic steps required to configure OSPF. The first step is to set the OSPF process into its configuration mode using the router OSPF process ID global command. The second step is to configure the OSPF router ID using the router ID ID value router subcommand and assigning an IP address on a loopback interface. Step three is to use the network IP address wildcard mask area area ID router subcommand and configure it along with any matched interfaces being added to the listed area. Step 4 involves changing the hello and dead intervals of the interface using the IP OSPF hello dash interval time and IP OSPF dead dash interval time interface subcommands. In step 5, we tune the interface costs by setting the cost directly using the IP OSPF cost value interface subcommand and changing the interface bandwidth using the bandwidth value interface subcommand as well as modifying the numerator in the formula to calculate the bandwidth based cost using the auto cost reference bandwidth value router subcommand. In step 6, we configure OSPF authentication for a particular interface using the IP OSPF authentication interface subcommand for all interfaces in an area using the area authentication router subcommand. In step 7, we enable multiple equal cost routes support using the maximum paths number router subcommand. And remember that steps 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7 are actually optional.